We've been looking at how kinetic and potential energy work in a simple harmonic motion. So we had that the potential energy was half kx squared and the kinetic was half mv squared. And from there we are able to do graphs of uh, energy versus position, or displacement in this case, or energy versus time. And we saw then that the total energy is conserved. But what I'd like to do now is show you how to derive another equation for velocity. And again, this derivation may be a little bit annoying. If you want, you can just skip to near the end of the video and just see the answer, just see the equation for this velocity. But I'd like to show you where it came from. So I think it's important, first of all, to start off with the fact that the total energy is equal to the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Now, if we do that, that means then that we can say that the total energy, oops, I'll just make sure it's more clear here. Well, you can replace potential energy with half kx squared, where k is a spring constant and x is your displacement, plus one half mv squared, where m is your mass, v is your velocity squared. That's because ep is half kx squared and your kinetic energy is half mv squared. Okay, but we also learned that it's constant. It remains constant, this total energy. So we could say equals some constant value. But the, basically the question is what to put in here? I mean, what, what do we actually put in here in this? Because we want to say that these are actually the same. I mean, this plus this equals some value. Now, what is that value? Well, we could actually look at a graph. So maybe I'll do this like this. So look at maybe the energy versus time graph. If we did that graph here, like this, this is time, and this right here is energy. Well, at time t equals zero, we had the kinetic energy was down here, ek was down here, and we had at the ep, the potential energy was up here. And they sort of went like this and like this. So in that case, actually this isn't very clear, maybe I should change the colors here. So I'll just go like this. Now, actually, maybe I'll even use the same colors here. So my potential energy was in blue, my kinetic was in green. So I'll do it like that. So over here, my kinetic will be in green. So my um, kinetic energy here is going to be zero at time t equals zero. And then it's going to go up and then down again. So something like this. And my, so that's ek. And my potential energy starts off up here and goes sort of like this. This is my ep. So look carefully, then if I want my total energy, well, total energy is just this top part here. That's ET, total energy. That's this constant value. Well, look at T equals zero. This is the important thing here. So at T equals zero, I have that my kinetic energy equals zero. Therefore, my total energy is just going to be uh, one half KX squared, because that is you know, at every point, the total energy is just kinetic plus potential. But at this point right here, at t equals zero, I've got no kinetic, so it's all potential. So I could say that. And in fact, what I should do, I should be very careful here with this graph, I think. This graph is technically supposed to sort of touch, touch this right here. What I can do then is say this actually happens at a special displacement. This is actually happens at x zero. Because x zero is your maximum displacement that's what's happening here because your displacement can be anything but in this case x0 is your maximum displacement and sometimes x0 is called a the amplitude so just so you can sort of see that this this right here is what i can put in here so this right here and this right here i'm going to combine these two whoops I should be careful about my circle here so these two right here this equals some constant, and the constant they're going to equal is going to be this. Okay, so this right here, and this right here, I'm going to set these two equal to each other. So I can say that, maybe I'll do that on the next page. So I'll say, therefore, I have half kx squared plus half mv squared equals what I just said it would be here. It would be half kx zero squared. It's important that we have this distinction here with this x0. So as I'm doing this then, here I am, I'm trying to do the value here. So I need to know this. So let's see here. Here we 
go. I'm just trying to find out uh, where it is that I am on my sheet here. For some reason, some weird stuff is happening. There we go. So if I want to do this right here and do this on another page, then uh, I can, of course, do that. So I'll add this, and then I say that, there we go. Then I'm going to add a page and say then that half kx squared plus half mv squared equals half kx zero squared. That's what I'm going to write right here. So half kx squared plus one half mv squared equals one half kx zero squared. That's my constant value that I had been looking for here. And because of that, now what I can do is go a little bit further now. Um, I mean, I can just try to solve for this, basically, and work on it. Uh, the good news is the halves all cancel out. So that's kind of nice. So now I have kx squared plus half mv squared equals kx0 squared. Remember, x0 is your maximum displacement. Whereas x, that's just your displacement wherever you're looking at. So there is a difference between them. Whoops. Go. So there is actually a difference. So if I'm trying to do this then, away I go, I can actually do this and say, okay, well fine, I have this uh, kx. Maybe I'll move this kx squared to the right. So now I'm just going to have mv squared equals kx0 squared minus kx squared. See, I've taken this piece and moved it to the right, so now it becomes a minus. Well, what I can do now is actually combine like terms. I've got a k in both of them, so I'll say k times x0 squared minus x squared, just to sort of pretty it up a little bit here. So I've got k. But I want to get v by itself, because I'm trying to get an equation for velocity. My whole goal here is to find an equation for the velocity. So how am I going to do that? Well, I guess i got to get v on its own. So v squared, at least, i got to divide both sides by m, so I have k over m is x0 squared minus x squared. Okay, great. Now what? Well, now I want v by itself. So v is going to be the square root of this. In fact, technically it should be plus or minus the square root of k over m times the square root of x0 squared minus x squared. Now you might think, oh, the square root just undoes the squares here, but no, not if there's adding or subtracting going on. It's really important to consider this. But, we had something else, we had something sort of special that we introduced before. There's actually something kind of interesting that omega squared equals k over m. In other words, omega equals square root of k over m. This is something to do with springs, it turns out. Your angular frequency is equal to the square root of your spring constant divided by m. Well, if that's the case then, this square root of k over m can be replaced with omega. So yeah, I can actually replace that. So then finally, I have v equals plus or minus omega times the square root of x0 squared minus x squared. And this is your other equation for velocity. This is it. So the whole goal was to sort of derive an extra equation for velocity. Well, here it is. This is actually a very useful one. Um, now you might wonder about the plus or minus, like what's going on there? But it turns out you need that because you have two different velocities. I mean, sometimes you have it uh, at any point in your oscillation when it's going sort of back and forth. Uh, when something's going back and forth, let's say your example was with the spring like we had before. So if you've got your spring going, your mass on a spring going back and forth, no matter where you're looking at, if you say, um, given this position, what's my velocity? Well, if I know my displacement at some point, so maybe it's over here, there also exists a place where it's going the exact same speed, but it's negative. That's because there's two places where the speed is the same. So that's why we do need this plus or minus. So this equation, very, very helpful for us. And in fact, you can go one step further if you want. What about the maximum speed? We saw this before, but let's actually take a look. What happens at the maximum speed? It's at the maximum speed when, if you remember carefully, this one right here, it's at maximum speed when the displacement equals zero. Because when it's at displacement equals zero, it's when it's right here at the equilibrium point. And that's where it's going the fastest. So because of that then, just set x equal to zero. That means you have v equals plus or minus omega times a square root 
of x0 squared, because this here became a 0. And then the square root of something squared is just x0. So that actually happens there. Now, of course, when that happens, there's only one place where that happens. So that means now you can actually take away the plus or minus. So you can say that happens at omega x0. Or you could also say, so that would be v max. Or you could say it happens at omega times a, because that's the amplitude. Or you could say x0, you could say, well, that is the uh, maximum displacement. So it turns out that's actually pretty interesting, I think, is that you can find the maximum speed as well, just using this equation here, knowing about how everything sort of starts here. Remember I said the key to all this stuff right here was knowing sort of about your start situation. Sort of being able to look at your uh, thing here and actually thinking about what goes on left and right here like this. So everything really stems from this, I think. So again, we can calculate or we just derived an equation for the velocity of this uh, whatever is undergoing SHM, simple harmonic motion, at any given displacement. This, remember, this is your maximum displacement. That's sometimes called your amplitude. And this here is your angular frequency.